Hi there, I'm uh, Christian Blanc. I'm the uh, vice chairman of uh, the world's largest building biology association, Verband Baubiologie. And I would like to um, give you an insight into the, the field of building biology, what building biology actually is, what it can do, what kind of relevance it has. Building biology is the science that describes the, um, the impact that physical, chemical and microbiological factors have on people, on our bodies, on the organism, living inside of buildings, inside closed areas. It can be buildings, that can also be cars, that can be buses, that can be basically any indoor area. Why it's also called indoor environment analysis. This is what building biology does. And the building obviously stands for the building and the biology for the biological relevance of all the factors that we have inside those buildings and, uh, and indoor environments. We have got a multitude of physical factors that have an influence, a biological relevance. That can be um, electric and magnetic fields, which are oftentimes caused by our electrical installation inside our buildings and all the different devices and appliances that we're using. Um, it can also be outdoor sources. It can be sources that basically lie outside our, our buildings, overhead power lines, underground power lines, and, and many others um, that can still be measured and, and, and can still have biologically relevant field strengths within buildings. Um, then we're talking about electromagnetic waves, which is basically everything that is uh, used for wireless communication, all the technologies used for wireless uh, communication, for example, Wi-Fi, for example, the ECT cordless phones, 5G, and of course, all the other older generations of um, mobile network technology, and um, uh, that is static electric and magnetic fields, again, caused by um, for example, ferromagnetic materials used in buildings or used in um, our furniture, anything that can be close to the body, especially in, uh, in sleeping areas. Um, electrostatic fields can be caused by textiles that are uh, electrostatically, um, yes, um, that can be electrostatically provoked and therefore create an electrostatic field with no frequency but still biologically relevant. We're talking about radioactivity and radon gas. We're talking about um, um, sound phenomenons, for example, humming at infrasound levels at very low frequencies. That can be uh, the light, the light quality and the light spectrum. As we know, especially the blue light has a very strong impact on our melatonin synthesis in the evenings and melatonin as we all know is a very very important hormone that has a multitude of functions within our body um, as indoor environment analysis goes along we also look at indoor toxins that can be gases like formaldehyde for example or um, um, co right? carbon oxide carbon monoxide that can be um, so-called volatile organic compounds, um, which are especially used as solvents, but they do have some, uh, some other causes or some other uses as well. Then there we have the semi-volatile organic compounds, especially pesticides. And then we've got particles, particle um, matters that we also inhale, like for example, asbestos, asbestos fibers, but many other um, fibers or, or particles that can be biologically relevant and can be inhaled. And now, we usually breathe about 12 to 20,000 liters of indoor air a day, which means that all those uh, factors, even at very or relatively low concentration levels, will have a biological impact if we are exposed for a long enough time. Um, apart from the indoor toxins, we also have the microbiology, which means we have mold, we have bacteria, we have uh, yeast, we have different kinds of allergens. So the, all these areas are the biologically relevant factors indoors. They can be analyzed, it can be, they can be identified, and they can in many cases be either eliminated or at least reduced to a very high degree in order to um, enable the organism to have uh, an exposure that is as low as possible. And the lower the 
the lower the, uh, the, the, the exposure to all these factors, the better for the body, the, the less the strain on the body on a permanent basis. So when it comes to cooperating um, or the, the cooperation between building biologists, indoor environmental analysts and doctors, especially when it comes to um, the clinic environmental medicine, it is of utmost importance that the indoor environments in which the patients are spending a lot of time, especially in the sleeping areas, but also in other areas like the workplace, because we spend about eight hours a day in our beds and another, on average, eight hours a day at our working places, which many times are computer desks, but they can also be other working places. Those are two-thirds of our lives. It's 16 hours a day on average. It's very important to look at the different um, factors, physical, chemical, and microbiological factors in these two areas and see how we can reduce them as much as possible. Um, now, the cooperation between the, uh, between the medical doctors and the indoor environment analysts makes a lot of sense because in those areas we can't leave the patient alone and just give general advice, general tips. It is very, a very complex area which needs thorough testing in all the different areas, especially because all those different factors have an interaction with each other. We know that EMFs are biologically relevant, but we also know there are current studies that show that EMFs are a lot more biologically relevant if we have, for example, formaldehyde um, at an elevated concentration level in the same room, or that EMFs and radioactivity have um, an effect on each other or basically um, do um, um, increase the, the, the overall uh, biological relevance when both are present at the same time. So it's very important to cooperate to see what we can do for the best of the patient, for the, for the best possible outcome, for the optimum um, living area, for the optimum living space so that the burden on the organism, the burden on the neurological, on the hormonal and on, and on the uh, immune system is reduced to the highest possible degree for the best possible outcome uh, in your therapy.